great expectations and whether they need to be reset for the Fed and for the markets. Let's ask Cameron Dawson, Chief Investment Officer for New Edge Wealth, and Joe Terranova of Virtus Investment Partners. He's also a CNBC contributor, and they are, as you see, here at Post 9. Cameron, I begin with you. Um, did we unravel anything big yesterday? And if we did, did we fix it today? <laughs> I suppose it's insofar as the inflation and yield story doesn't question the growth story underlying this market, then the risk on rally can continue. As long as we continue to see earnings estimates drift somewhat higher, have an optimism about the underlying growth of the economy, then risk on continues. The bigger issue would be is that if you start questioning risk because yields are so high or because the Fed stays hawkish. That's Said, Joe, we stabilized yields today. That helps the story. The S and P, as I look over Cameron's shoulder here, has retaken 5,200. So we've we've taken back that level. It sure looked a little dicey yesterday. Nerves were definitely tested. I'm not saying we're out of the woods today, but it's a whole different story because of the inflation read was a different story. Well, it looked dicey at 9:15 in the morning, but once the market opened, it stabilized because Nvidia and the Mag Seven showed up once again. That's, a, that's an intriguing dynamic over the last 24 hours. I'll touch on that in one second. But just as it relates to yesterday in the Federal Reserve, look, I've said this all along. Number one, we know the Fed's not adversarial, full stop. But secondarily, they want a reason. They want the reason to cut rates. They didn't get the reason to cut rates. What, did, what dropped late in the day yesterday in the business media? The news surrounding the balance sheet, the possibility that they'd be paring back uh, the balance sheet runoff. That's dovish in its nature. The ECB follows it this morning and says you get potentially uh, a June rate cut. And now in the last 24 hours, Scott, you've got the MAG-7 coming back once again. That's intriguing to me, a little bit concerning to me because of the strategy I run. But it's certainly relevant, and it speaks towards the market is focused and prioritized on earnings because that's where the spectacular earnings come from. All right, so we start tomorrow with earnings, but we're still fixated, Cameron, on when we're going to get these rate cuts. Mm -hmm. Some people would say if ever this year, but even the Fed speakers out today, you know, voting members like the New York Fed President John Williams, no need to do anything, quote, in the very near term, but he does expect the PCE to get to a level that is good, right? I'm paraphrasing that. It's two and a quarter, two and a half percent this year before moving closer to 2% next year. Barkin today, not where we want to be, but we are heading in the right direction. Collins, expect it will be appropriate to begin cutting later this year, more times needed now. Similar story, right? Yeah. The bottom line is they're still talking about cuts, just not yet. Yeah, they really want to cut which is why they ignored the inflation data from January. They did it in February, and now it sounds like they're going to do it for the March data as well to look through it, see it as a bump and not a reverse trend in direction. So it means that as we get closer to the May meeting, we get April data. If that continues to move in the opposite direction of what they want, it really will challenge them to keep this narrative. We think that the three cuts that they have put down in the dot plot is far too high, given the amount of inflation, given the resilience of growth, and given the fact that financial conditions are so easy, there's no urgency for them to move. So we think at the end of the day, it's going to be less than three cuts, and it likely is back and loaded to the back half of the year. Is the market going to be cool with that, patient enough to wait? They're cool with it, again, back to growth estimates. As long as growth is holding up, as long as we're seeing GDP estimates hold in okay, that means that the, that the market can forgive a lot. We also have to remember there is a liquidity dynamic happening here, and it's a, it's a little nebulous, but we know that liquidity has supported this market. So you add growth, liquidity, you can shake off a Fed, and apparently, as of today, you can shake off higher yields.